puck it up and then post it at the end. Oh, we're still talking about what we're doing. Oh, we're, we're live now, guys. Oh, we're actually live. Oh, yeah, we, yeah we're live now. Oh, right on. We're live. <laughs> we're, we're just, you know, rambling about, about some cool yeah. giveaways yeah, right. that we're going to be doing here. So, we're doing some giveaways. Yeah, so stay tuned yeah. and uh, disregard the dog in the background. <laughs> She's just trying to get her 15 seconds of fame, too. Yeah, um, right. Well, guys, this is episode 28 of the Start, Build, Grow show, and we got a pretty sweet guest today. Oh, man, this yeah. guy... I'm, I can't even introduce you yet, man. It's it's I'm getting too excited. I'm I'm trying to get my uh, you know channel my my inner announcer voice here so yeah. I can announce this guy because he's a big deal. This guy is mm -hmm. inspirational to to myself and to, right. to the whole roofing industry. So we'll, we'll, without further ado, we'll well no we'll, we'll introduce him in some minutes. So yeah, we'll let's get on. to the news and notes. We got a couple things. We yeah, gotta, gotta gotta update you on real quick. Thank you once again for tuning in to the Star Bill Growth Show. Mm -hmm. This is episode twenty nine. Is that right? 28? 28. Episode, episode 28. 28. Yep. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, we love and encourage interaction. And this one, we especially want some interaction because we're talking about sales. We want to answer yep. your sales questions. We want to provide some awesome value to, to you and your sales organization to where you can wake up tomorrow and just go 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 hit, 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 hit the hustle as hard as you possibly can and make some new sales, generate some revenue. For, for, for just tuning in and spend some time with us today. So yep. the more interaction, the better, the more yep. we learn, the more value we can provide for the show. Right. So what I'm going to do real quick is share this thing out just like you should. So click that little <laughs> button down there that uh, that here, that, that, that uh, will share this uh, bad boy out. Uh -huh. Well, you know, I'll, I'll kind of take over from here. So, that, you know, when I'm looking at business, the two most important things are obviously sales, right? So we got Ryan Roth here. Right. And we're going to be diving a little bit more into him with Sales Transformation Group, who's making a huge impact in the industry. And the second thing is investing, reinvesting back into your business. Right. So thinking about ways that you can improve processes and stuff like that. And that's where uh, you guys should definitely check out Job Nimbus Solutions Summit in Austin, Texas on October 22nd and the 23rd. Okay. Um, it's going to be really, really great. We actually have Randy who's going to be doing the keynote there. Danny Kerr with Breakthrough Academy is another awesome, awesome dude. He's going to be another, another keynote there as well. Um, a lot of opportunities to meet people, ask questions, figure out ways to improve your business processes. Um, and the best part about it is we'll actually be giving out um, a free giveaway today. Yep. That's yeah. what we're talking about. We yeah. are giving away a free ticket to that. So yep. at some point throughout the show, just pay yeah. attention. And uh, and we're we're gonna go ahead and uh, stimulate uh, either a share or a right. comment or something, and and you can actually win a free ticket today. Yeah. Uh, well, how about but, this? Man, actually, I'm getting hey, excited. Though. You know, do you mind if I actually? You know, I, I just thought something. How about if okay. they share it out, they get entered into um, the contest. We'll pick I like somebody. It. Yeah, and we'll pick okay. somebody from there at random. I love it. Yeah. So let's do that. So yeah. share this out. Yeah. And and actually, we're gonna count shares for till till what time tonight? Let's do the next. Let's let's wait till the let's let this thing share out. Yeah, let's yeah. let this thing stimulate, man. Yeah, let's yeah. get let's go viral here, right? Let's go viral. Let's okay. get as many shares as we possibly can on this thing. Well, you know what? And we are gonna pick someone randomly. Yeah. That shared this out. Yep. We obviously get the messages on Facebook. Yeah, you know, yeah. the little thing that dings at me all day long. Yeah. So we're gonna you know go through <laughs> that, and we're gonna find someone, and we're gonna give you a free ticket to the Solution Summit. Let's do it, man. Well, you know what? You said, you mentioned viral. You know, our guest actually. I mean, he's a pretty famous dude, man. I mean, he played pro, pro ball, didn't you, Ryan? Maybe we'll start there, man. Hey, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, so <laughs> let's introduce. Yeah. Right. Let's introduce my man, former professional baseball player yep. turned roofer. Yep. I want to hear that story. I and mean, uh -huh. why the heck would you end up as a roofer? But and this guy is now he he has worked with uh, roofing contractors. I mean, I don't even know the total. We're talking hundreds of millions of millions dollars. Millions of dollars. Yeah, hundreds, hundreds of millions. Hundreds of millions. Of you hear that? Hundreds of millions. In, in revenue, yeah. he's worked with contractors and helped develop their sales teams and 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 has seen an amazing yep. growth from his clients. Yep. And this guy, and on top of that, he's just my dude, man. This is an awesome guy that we just connect. And he's a guy that, you know, I could I could go on vacation with with uh -huh. my family, right? Yep. Just a oh, great, yeah. solid fun dude. to hang out with. Yeah. My guy, yep. Mr. Ryan Groth. What's up, buddy? How are you, sir? <gasps> Hey, Randy. Hey, Nick. Thanks for having me on, guys. What's up, Ryan? Man, so let's talk a little bit about that. You know, what do you think, actually? You know, you used to play pro ball. Was it the Los Angeles Angels you had some time with them, right? 
Yeah, I was in. Uh, I was with them for a little while. Hey, dude, I see you. Okay, so you've you've done some pretty cool things, man. You know, speaking of, of baseball, the pennant race is about us. Uh, I'm actually uh, a Brewers fan. You think they got a chance, or are they? they oh, they got a chance. They yeah, got a chance. Yeah, man. They're, they're looking strong with Christian Yelich too. Just hit his yeah. second cycle of the season. He's an incredible addition to their team. What a move they made. Uh, yeah, the Brewers are looking good, and the Rockies over there in Denver. They're they're pulling for the West, so it's it's tight. Yeah, man, we are excited here. I was I was living downtown Denver when we made that uh that that pennant when we won the pennant in what yeah. 2007. I was living in Denver and actually went to one of the World Series games. That was epic. I mean, they oh, already say I went to the game. Oh yeah. no way! They already say that uh, Denver. You know, the, the opening day is the biggest party in baseball. Yeah. Imagine when when Denver, which mm-hmm. the stadium is right downtown, there right. is going to be a million people downtown Denver. If we, if we if we make a run at the pennant again, this is going to be pretty fun. Heck yeah, yeah man! Ryan, you got to take a trip out here, make make an excuse for that. Let's go to a game. Yeah, let's let's get him out to Colorado. Yeah, I would love so, that playoff so, race. So Ryan, you you you're you're in baseball, right? You you know you did some time with the Angels. What what happened that got you in the position you are now, and and now that you have the opportunities to teach people you know, how to grow their business through sales? Like how did that come about? Um. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on. It's an honor mm-hmm. to see what you guys are up to. I, I love, I love you guys, and love what you're going for. And um, so, thanks for having me on the show and thanks, man. To share a little bit. Um, yeah. So, you know, baseball. It for me, it was uh, one of those chapters where you kind of thought it was going to last a little longer, right? You mm-hmm. thought you were going to go, and you always dream of it, and you hope to be a millionaire and um, and have a great influence and great, uh, great following. So. I, I really chased that, you know, I felt, I thought that was for me and I worked extremely hard and, uh, just loved the grind, um, and kind of just enjoyed the whole process of growing and, uh, getting to that next level. And so for me, success at a high level was always something I knew was for me. You know, I knew I was either gonna, if it wasn't that, that was going to go, it was going to go somewhere else. So yeah, I worked really hard and, um, showed a tremendous amount of diligence, built a ton of character. Um, throughout that, just overcoming trials and got a chance to travel over the country and, mm-hmm. um, you know, from playing ball in college where I'm like working at Red Lobster because I walked on to the junior college um, and, you know, just trying to make ends meet because, uh, you know, I didn't have the scholarship to get in the full ride to the MVP to the just kind of seeing the fruit of my labor was so rewarding. And I, I made a lot of sacrifices. So um, to do that. And so whenever I um, was done, I knew I would never. I knew I would have to put the same amount of energy or more into something else because it was so rewarding to work so hard and overcome so much adversity to become the top and uh, have a chance to be among the elite. I was like, there's, there's just no way I'm going to not figure out a way. And so Mm -hmm. through uh, coming down, I didn't know exactly what I was going to do, but I'm all about relationships. It's, you know, it's all about who, you know, um, and I think everything prepares you for the next and every relationship prepares you for the next. So just kind of kept my nose up in the wind and just kind of kept grinding and met an awesome entrepreneur in South Florida who, uh, became just a real close friend, like a big brother to me. He had been real successful. He's like, dude, I think you'd be great in sales. And at the time, believe it or not, after baseball, I thought I was going to be like a pastor. I wanted to be in ministry. I thought that was like for me, cause, um, my grandparents were in it, um, and I was really getting, you know, touched and loving the church I was at. That's where I met my wife and just kind of got a ton of community built. I thought that was what I was going to do um, until, you know, had, there's other plans that really t- seem to work out. So I got into sales to start to make some money after baseball. And my wife was like, hey, are you, you're not, how are you going to make money? Uh, coaching kids isn't really working out. I was like, hey, uh, I'm fig- I'll figure it out. Trust me, baby. I'll figure it out. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, I just, I said, let's go. And I ended up meeting this guy. He encouraged me to go in sales. He was in my church. And then he actually um, had to move. And, but he was really net, pretty well networked in South Florida. And he's like, Hey, before I go, I want to introduce you to this guy. He's actually Billy Graham's grandson. And he was like a really well connected person in South Florida. And so when I met him, he connected me to this roofing contractor who had just wrote a piece of software for his business in South Florida. So this commercial mm-hmm. roofing contractor um, was at the time doing, um, about 24 million. And, um, by the time I left, uh, to start this on my own, um, he was, he was already at 50 and that's like 10 million in service, 40 million in re-roof, like no new construction. 
um, all high margin, you know, short, you know, uh, collection billing time uh, type of work, high re highly relational. And so for me, I was uh, just had my first kid. I um, I had two more apps since then. <laughs> we finally bought a TV. Um, and <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I met with him and when we met and to sell, and I was really wanting to sell the software that he wrote because there wasn't another piece of software for him. It's kind of like Job Nimbus, but it's just specifically sales. I just got just infatuated with sales. I loved, you know, I always felt like I was selling myself to get to um, on the next level in teams and, yeah. and growing. And then, you know, in the church stuff, you're always getting to speak and teach and lead. And I just loved being on stage. I love being in front of people and making an impact. And I felt like with sales, um, selling what I was selling made a huge impact in people's business. So mm -hmm. the thing was, though, is I was selling the software, which is a pipeline, follow up management tool, data uh, reporting tool for accountability purposes, I found out this whole industry was lacking the infrastructure from a sales perspective to actually, you know, make the software work like this contractor was using it for his business. So, and because plug, I was, you can plug, uh, you can plug a follow up if you want. <laughs> sure. You know, follow up CRM is the name of the company. Um, I launched that from 2013 to the beginning of this year. So I ran that company um, and decided to move away from, um, just selling it to South Florida businesses, to contracting, to roofing, to let's become a national, you know, roofing product to I'm traveling all over the country, mm -hmm. implementing it to, hey, the guy I was working with, his name's Greg. I said, hey, a lot of these guys don't have like the culture you have. They don't have sales meetings. They don't have training that you brought in that you brought me on. They don't have a sales process. They don't have um, a, a way of hiring people, identifying if they're a good candidate. They don't have all this stuff they don't have a sales manager even a sales manager is something that the owner does it for 10 percent of his job and then no wonder the guys are turning over no wonder they, they're not using the system no wonder they're not accountable they don't even have targets and quotas and individual goals i'm just like i think i could actually do this and i think i could charge money for it and help bring cash into the business and he's like all right let's i love the idea and so i just decided to wear that hat like i'm the expert and um, I own that that hat that uh, responsibility and started just providing services at different levels um, along with the software man for gosh about three years and traveled everywhere until I said man I got to slow down um, but I loved it so much after about a year of just focusing on selling the software I I decided to um, approach everybody and say hey what do you guys think about me starting my own coaching and sales training company working with your clients and working in roofing and we just work as strategic partners. And uh, he's like, man, I love the idea. I think this is your passion. You'd be great at it. And I think it'd be a beautiful thing. And it's you deserve it for you and your family. You've got the network and the skills now once you go for it. So that was, uh, yeah, that was, um, that was uh, you know, closing in on a year ago now. And uh, it's been an awesome journey just working specifically in mm -hmm. the sales development space in this industry. After all, though, I've already done it for a few years on different levels and been around one of the top commercial roofing sales teams in the country, you know, bar none, most disciplined, accountable, um, and uh, just being able to witness that and then go impose that standard, that culture, um, and help create that in other companies has been amazing. And I'm so grateful for that mentorship and that season because that's that's what I'll say is out of the gate is mentorship. Um, helped helped really create that um and i think that's just you know knowing the right people and being hungry and being yeah. at the right time so i'm super thankful for that but i feel like i got i got to step on a, a 60 something year old shoulders of a guy's been a titan in the industry for 30 some years and i just got to you know he just got to throw me out in like a trampoline into the industry and give me a lot of opportunity so from there i've been i've been I've capitalized on it to <laughs> say the least so yeah it's, it's amazing if you think about how many kind of mentors that were kind of throughout my life that I, yeah. that I was able to you know feed off of and just sponge off of. And to this day, I have some major mentors that, uh, that really helped me out you know, in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's yeah, I, mentorship. I, I can't, that's an amazing asset to have is to, to, to really lean on and, and build relationships with mm -hmm. other people that know more, that have done more, have more experience that, have for have lost more have made more mistakes that have lived the journey lived the life or 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 done what you want to do find that person and learn from them gosh so, how much more valuable is it to like learn from someone else's mistakes oh. 
not just <laughs> solely your own. I mean, we're going to make boo-boos, but uh -huh. like, it's the best shortcut out you know, there, man. It's, it's definitely a shortcut. shortcut. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it's suddenly their word becomes like gold, you know, like, oh, it, like it that is. thing's proven and tested and got the fire on it. I could kind of stand on that. Mm -hmm. And, um, and thankfully, I mean, you know, it's, it's been really great Am amongst other mentors. Now I have right. a new chapter. I have another mentor now specifically around my type of business model. And, um, my gosh, it's just invaluable. And you got to cultivate yeah. those and you got to give and you got to give back though. You can't just take, you got to right. pay for it or have like, you know, maybe as I mean, this, this new guy that that's been amazing for me, um, his son's a high school baseball player. So, I mean, I literally went up to Boston for a little conference and literally just the whole point was just to hang out with his son and do some batting practice and coach a couple things and invest into him because it's mm -hmm. just reciprocal. It's beautiful when you have friendships like that, that are, you know, mentoring and, so right. it's great. Well, you know, think about, you know, how much would you pay to spend eight hours with the person you want to be in terms of achievements in your industry? You know, what kind of value you could put to that? It's, it's unbelievable. So if you can get a mentor, it's like, wow. But I, I what I want to do, though, for sure, is I want to dive into some of the meat of the of what you do. And I want to make it come out in a way where these guys out here that are watching can can take it and implement it. Right. So, I mean, I think sales process is a huge topic to kind of talk about. Um, mm -hmm. You can just kind of take it from there and so talk a little bit about sales process. Yeah. Thanks, Josh, for watching. Warren, what's up, guys? Yeah, Josh, Jeff, Dustin, yeah. uh, Dave, everybody's watching. Uh, Josh threw that question in. Yeah. And yeah, it's great, man. Let's both get on that. Let, let you go. Can, uh, can I see the comments? Am I able to see that? For okay. some reason, his. Oh, here we go. I, I see him live now. So it's on the bottom or uh, mm -hmm. on the top, the most, the top one. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, the, the power of sales process is, first of all, it, it provides awareness of where you are because what happens, guys, what, what occurs when you're in the middle of a sales call? What is the, uh, what is the, the, the X factor that's never the same? It's always different. What is it? The person on the other side. The person on the other side, right? <laughs> so, and so that's always changing. And typically what, what happens with them is they have an agenda, right? And, and, and they want to know something. They want to know and they have a certain level of resistance that's up. So to have a sales process gives you an awareness level of where you are in terms of your progress around um, getting to something that's closable. And if you don't have that, you're just going to get dragged and pulled over to uh, what they want and skip all the upfront things that a salesman needs to do in a sales process effectively to, to you know, make sure there's urgency and traction and um, measuring their ability to actually buy from you. And so what this does is it provides awareness. And if you don't standardize that, if it's not a milestone centric sales process, that is like, you know, imagine the. The, the Patriots or the Broncos or, you know, um, the Packers uh, playing go. the game without, without a playbook that everybody knows that everybody's, you know, knows every time. And what, it, so it's, it's like they would be, they would just get slaughtered. And uh, it's not like, you know, so a sales process gives us that because what happens in the game is there's adrenaline, you know, what happens when adrenaline, you know, kicks in, your emotions take over. What happens when your emotions take over? You, you get distracted and you lose focus. What happens when you lose focus? Um, you know, you get pulled to further along the sales process. You don't ask good questions. You don't really qualify them. You quote. What happens when you quote without talking to somebody who gets qualified and has and understands value? You, you're trying to close something that's unclosable. Mm -hmm. And um, and so that that really makes a huge impact to the bottom line because, what is your dream, Randy, as a contractor? It's, I mean, would I be safe to say that it would be to have a predictable revenue, a, a business model where revenue becomes predictable and you can forecast the future for your business and your life? Yeah, not just revenue. Yeah. I mean, you, you want to be able to predict, track, predict as much as you possibly can. And, and revenue Absolutely. Is, is obviously a huge factor to that, but... Mm -hmm you know, a culmination of these processes along with, you know, uh, uh, technology and things like that can sure. put those together. And, and having a process is just having some sort of duplicatable process that alone will change, change the game for any mm -hmm. business and any sort of sales organization. So let's go walk us through just a little bit of what is the process? What's your, you know, just a real quick, 
process uh, uh, that, that you really kind of focus on when it comes to sales? Um, well, first of all, I, I always kind of think about I like to use baseball in my my world. So my sales process is like a baseball diamond. So you're at home plate, you're up to bat. You know, sometimes you got to get yourself up to bat. And then first base is an appointment. Um, so whether you got yourself on an appointment, a lead came in um, to your company, you assigned the lead to a sales guy, you got a referral, whatever that is, you got on, you got on what I call first base. And they're a suspect at that point. They are not qualified yet at all. Just because they have a roof and they they have a, a pulse doesn't mean they're qualified, right? So like they, what I believe is you get on first base and it's about a problem. Um, when I am on first base, I want to get the second, which makes them a true prospect, which makes them, you know, this means there's somebody who actually is is somebody who, who, who you could do business with. And it's not just because they have a building with a leak. It's I've slowed the process down enough where I've differentiated, I've built rapport, I have a better relationship than, than anybody else. I have qualities that, you know, people believe in me more than anybody else. They, have, they see my expertise more than anybody else. And the only way you could do that is by having an intelligent conversation and asking really great questions. And so the idea is that we want to get away from an intellectual because intellectual doesn't buy. Intellectual kicks tires and price shops. What buys value is is uh is is emotions so you want to try to get to some level of impact of yeah. what is occurring if they don't fix it so first base appointment second base they have emotions and there's urgency third base i want to get to some level of uh qualifying like am i with the decision maker um mm -hmm. what their timeline is to solving all these awesome problems or gnarly problems that they shared earlier um do i have uh, a timeline is there competition involved um, you know, are they willing to invest a little bit more money with me to do it right the first time? Or are they looking mm -hmm. for price and cheap, cheapest bid? And if they are looking for cheapest bid, can I push back and uh, create value in that moment? Because the consequence of going with a cheap contractor is, you know, can be pretty costly, you know, depending on the situation because you have to do it again or there's leaks or there's problems that could occur because of poor workmanship because typically you're cutting corners to get low, you know, and someone cut corners, what happens is, uh, Poor workmanship impacts their, it could impact their business or profits. Um, especially in commercial roofing, it's business and home, it's more personal, but nonetheless, it's frustrating. So once I've qualified them and they're on third base, they're qualified. That I've got them for appointment to prospect to qualified. And from there, at that point is when I'm actually going to go up on the roof or when I'm actually going to perform the Eagle view, whatever it is that take off. Um, maybe I already have it, but nonetheless, I'm going to work up my estimate and then deliver a compelling presentation mm -hmm. and uh, close the deal. So you're doing all that prior to that estimate. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Some of so that could occur on the phone uh, a little bit. Some of that. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, and that, that applies too. I mean, there's a lot of variances in the different type of clientele that we're going after as roofers, right? So, you know, sometimes we're... It, Sometimes something that's a, a standard practice, you know, the industries mm -hmm. that gets carried over to roofing and, and everybody gets so tied up when the, in the insurance based sales, they lose these, you know, these foundational, foundational sales, yeah. sales tactics. Right. And and that's a big thing that we teach in our, in our process as well is, you know, the sale is only a small portion of what you're actually doing. You know, setting up that sale is almost more important and the better job you do qualifying and setting that sale up yeah the better off the, the better chance you have of closing it so can we do this then so i want this for both of you guys actually randy and ryan is there, so what kind of questions should these you know these guys in the sales team be asking to kind of stand out from all these other people that might be knocking the doors or contacting uh these homeowners or whatever it might be well when it comes to an, an insurance claim yeah i mean you want as much information as you can because because okay. in, in the insurance are people doing game, that are people doing that like, yes and no okay uh, in, in the insurance game homeowners are getting more and more and more savvy mm -hmm. and 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 they're trying to outwit and outsmart the sale the roofing you know the the, the roofing sales guy by by right. going oh i want to bid i want to bid i want to bid and and, and a, a savvy salesperson knows that all right i know they have a claim mm -hmm. i know that in the in their mind, and I get this as a homeowner, it's like you got this big insurance claim, blah, blah, you, you, it crossed your mind. Like, huh, is there a way I can profit from this? Or can I get a bid to get the job done cheaper? But that it's that, men, that mentality. Yeah. And we got to get that information out as soon as possible. You know, we want to get that cat out of the bag as soon as possible. You know, so we got to overcome the first obstacle of 
hey, uh, I need a bid. I need a bid. I need a bid. We got to figure out why. So like, what, what why, kind of are you, why are you approaching yeah. uh, uh, me? Why Why are you – and why and how long? Like how long has this been an issue? How how long have you been waiting on doing this project? Like and, and get a sense of time and then, and then you can also – get a sense of uh uh what their situation is right yeah. so you know did they did they have you know damage in the in, in from the storm or that sort of thing uh what's their insurance carrier yeah. you want to get as many much information as you can to figure out exactly what what route to take when you're actually trying to set up that close or set up the call because so, the more information the more honestly rebuttals you can get out a, a, ahead of time yeah the less ammo they have when they, when when you get down to brass tacks and trying to close a deal out. So why are salespeople skipping these steps in the roofing industry specifically? What, what's going on? Is it feel like they just have so many houses to be knocking on? Is it like, hey, I feel like so many people are fighting for their business. I need to close it now. Like wh what's the issue that, that is not Two happening? Two things. Lack of training is one and it, it, low hanging fruit. You know, because so it's these just like storms a numbers happen, game type thing. These storms happen and every, you know, every roof in a neighborhood needs to be replace and this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's not that hard to convince someone to give away a free roof. Right. Right. So mm -hmm. they're out there doing whatever they can to not provide any value, just give away a free roof and trying to do it as cheaply and, as, and, and facilitate what the, what they think their clients want. But when you flip that and you actually try to build value, yeah. a lot of these clients actually want to, to upgrade and want a, a better situation than what they're in before. But instead yeah. of just, you know, going all in, just trying to sign contract, sign contract, sign contract, take a minute to build a relationship, set that call up, figure out exactly mm -hmm. what your client's needs and wants are outside of the insurance claim. Yeah. And, and not only are you going to be able to sell them and build a relationship, but when I'm dealing with an insurance, I want to not only sell that person, yeah. I want that person's grandma. I want that person's cousin. I want you that want person's everybody. uncle. I yeah. want their neighbor. I want, that's the relationship you have to build. Boom. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, you can't do that in 15 minutes trying yeah. to get someone to sign a contingency form. It doesn't work. So how do you respond? So we actually had um, Sebastian. I, I just lost a comment here, but he said, what about somebody that asked for like three bids? Like what, what do you do there? You, you, you got to keep the conversation in, in a way, you know what they're actually after, a better right? price. you know, you right. know, they're trying to figure out there's two things. Okay. One, they're either trying to figure out how to profit from an insurance claim or two, they just don't know the process. So my, 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 my explanation for that is you've got to be really dialed in and explaining that process to a homeowner mm -hmm. in a mm -hmm. way that doesn't come off like a used car salesman. Okay. You know, people just need to understand the process from both perspectives. Right. So you right. need to know it from the insurance company's perspective, from the roofing company's perspective, explain every step of that process and, and why that process exists and why we use the same software to create our estimates and the, and, and why it doesn't make sense to, to do double the work when the insurance adjuster is getting paid to do this work for us. And he's going to be 90% of the time, he's going to be wrong. So it, it's a much better situation when we start there and we're just making some corrections yeah. versus doing double the work. Right. Right. You know, so if you, if you can relate to a homeowner, and explain that to them in a, in a way that makes sense, they're, they're going to trust you and understand that. Oh, okay. I don't need three bids. Yeah. What you need is three interviews and you need to hire the right person to help you with your project. Okay. So I, I so we got a question from Bernie. So I want to make sure okay. we hit on that was a great response by the way. Janice was really feeling, feeling it. She said preach Randy. She was <laughs> Thanks, <vibing Janice>. <laughs> She's actually hopping on here. So yeah. I'm excited to have her on. Um but let's see here. So I just lost the Bernie one here. My computer's acting up on well me. go let's go back real quick. We'll, we'll yeah. get back to Bernie because yeah. because I I love when we get in these call these conversations because there's two different ways to approach this. You have mm -hmm. a retail based model and you have an insurance based model. Right. A lot of us are, are so focused and kind of hung up on the insurance model, but the reality of it is the retail model is like 80 to 85% of the market versus mm -hmm. insurance is 15 to 20% of the market. People don't think that people don't understand that because they don't see the, the ultimate value in commercial roofing and commercial retail projects. So, and that's where, that's where Ryan just absolutely dominates. So I want to hit your perspective on this as well. Yeah, I think a couple. So I'm going to go back to your question earlier about why salespeople don't ask these questions. Yeah. And um, I use a tool that helps analyze all their competencies in sales and measures it against 1.8 million salespeople and shows where you rank and what you need to get better at and exactly how you need to get better. And that's how I that's what I use as a guideline to help 
help kind of pinpoint exactly what's causing someone's problems in sales. And a few, several of those are sales DNA, actual competencies, which um, are the hidden weaknesses that are in between your ears that could really either support or totally sabotage your ability to sell. And what we're mm -hmm. talking about is moving away from a transactional sales approach to a consultation, a consultative sales approach. So that's the difference. Like transactional is spit out as many prices as you can. You got to be low bid, full feature set, and that's what's going to get you business. But how can you guys make money and grow if you're full feature set and low? So it's, but you have to do consultative sales, which is harder, right? That takes work. That takes training. That takes, or, and what, what gets in the way, sorry. Or in our world, that's the educational sale. Like we're same, same thing. It's in our world, it's educate, you're educating your client, right? Sure. As, as sure. As and, and and what what inhibits or sabotages somebody's ability to ask a lot of good questions is predominantly a high need for approval. So salespeople need to be liked so much that they think they're insulting somebody by asking them questions that are actually they're a little uncomfortable that um, create, you know, some kind of a still moment, but then actually creates a lot of value. You know, um, and so when somebody starts to realize that my need to be liked needs to be replaced with the word respect, need to be respected. Now you're not trying to make a friend or concerned about losing a friend. Mm. Now you're concerned about helping bring value. And then that's Ooh, when someone's like, like, oh, I'll pay, I'll pay you money because uh -huh. I respect what you're saying. You're a professional. I'm a consumer. Or I'm a business that needs help with a problem, not um, being a friend and being buddy, old buddy. It's I'm telling you, being a Broncos yep. fan isn't going to get you the deal. Being an expert that brings value, that demands respect, not because you're a jerk, but because you're graceful, but because you ask tough questions, you're not afraid, that's going to create value. And you could tell that. You know when you're you know, with somebody and you could tell if they're an expert or not. So, yes. dude, that, that was awesome. Dude. Yeah. That and was great. But I, I take do, all that and sprinkle in a little yeah. empathy and you're on stop. I'll, I'll tell you one thing. We'll be chopping that one up and tell a little clip for you guys later, a little highlight film, the ESPN top 10 right there. That was, that was, <laughs> well, that you got to finish that, it. That, that was, I was throwing oh, the my, card right dude, on top. I, oh, sorry. My bad. We, <laughs> we had Sebastian here. So I, he had a pretty good question. And I wanted to make sure we were hit on for sure. Uh, so he says, when you can't meet the customer personally, can I send a proposal that explains um, the, the, uh, the process and say that we're doing work for insurance fair pro, uh, proceeds? Yeah. I, I am kind of adamant against any sort of, especially when it comes to insurance or homeowner based sales, in home based sales. I'm very, I'm not a fan of emailing quotes ever because the, the reality the sale is. is not made from a piece of paper. Uh, people buy from people, right? And they buy from people they know, they like, and they trust. How are you going to get someone to know you, like you, and trust you over the phone or over an email? Yeah. Now, I have dabbled a little bit in the Zoom type of situation, and we're starting to play with that. We're actually, a lot of our sales guys are, are going. Elite, you are? I think yeah, that's, I think that's next generation. I think that's next yeah, level. We're I already think, doing it. Are we're you, already you going for that, Ryan? What do you think about that? You like that? I, let, let's, here's a couple things. With a good brain. It's all about communication. Yeah. All right. So 55. No, let's go the other direction. 7% of communication is your actual words. Okay, so 7%. what you're actually communicating, only 7% of that is the actual words. 38% of what you're communicating is your tonality. 55% yep. of your communication is body language. So when you email that proposal and you're trying to persuade Jordan. somebody to buy a $20,000 roof or whatever it is, you're limiting yourself to 7% of your ability to persuade someone to buy from you. So – when you think about the power of being physically present and then with the right demeanor and with the right questions and with the awareness of where you need to be mm -hmm. and the right ability to bring value and create emotion and leverage that emotion and understand timeline, you are now a, a superstar. So can I create body language, tonality, and words on Zoom? Not necessarily. Some. It, Some, can, right? Can limited. Some. So, limited. so but is body language, you know, it's to a degree – Tonality is there. And then so I think that their sales organization should if they're local should be doing everything face to face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. However, there are going to be the events of, hey, I'm on my vacation rental or I'm out uh, here or there. And um, 
I still wouldn't, you know, if you did all that, I'd still do everything over the phone. I mean, I got sales yeah. guys who used and to email proposals here's how we're and now they're that. doing, now they're doing FaceTime or phone call deliveries in only on a, only in a pinch in closing deals because they're not just shooting something over. They're actually presenting a solution right for the first time in front of them within their timeline, within their budget, with, with effort, with leverage. So and it's yeah, and in order for it to work, there's got to be some sort of uh, a relationship built at some point. So during Absolutely. the, you know, th this may be a situation where maybe you, because because another thing that is imperative when doing in-home sales is that you're selling to both the the the, the both people, both you know, husband and wife, both decision yep. makers in 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 that situation. That's yep. imperative. And you can't always facilitate that first mm -hmm. try or knocking doors. You may not catch them at the right situation. However, right. you can be out there, you can build a relationship, you can, you know, take a video and show what's going on on their roof, establish credibility and set yourself up to then back it up with a, the busy millennial homeowner, right? You have to be able to read that at, up front to figure out whether you go that route or not. But it's only a specific situation that you can execute a, a, a virtual sale, if you will. But there is it, it does work. And a lot of our guys are actually able to do that but they establish a relationship up front ahead of time okay. and then they just reschedule so, sometimes it's after the adjustment you know sometimes so, sometimes homeowners are just adamant about you know i am not signing anything until yeah. you know until and until i have my paperwork until i know what's going on perfect so let's go ahead and go through this process and explain everything once you have that paperwork let's mm -hmm. get online and i'll show you exactly i'll walk you through the paperwork and then we have a virtual contract and a virtual presentation that we can do as well mm -hmm. um I love that. And I also say two things, a, w a couple things that come to mind. If somebody can't meet with you, it does not mean you cannot consult with them early. You have a 238% improved chance of getting a deal if you call lead within 60 seconds. Within 60 Every, seconds? Within 60. Mm -hmm. So when a lead comes in, not the perceptionist, I'm talking about the expert on the phone. You see what I'm saying? The difference. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm talking about an inbound lead or a self-generated lead. Okay, I'm not talking about uh, obviously this, the, the door knocking. But in the event that a lead comes in, you want to call them as soon as you can. Hey, Nick. Hey, Randy. This is Ryan with Elite Roofing. They catch you at a good time. I understand you got some concerns with your roof. Can you tell me more about that? Okay. Will you be able to, yeah, after you consult with them, you have your, and I could role play this, but I'm just going to speed through this. Then what needs to happen is, oh, I'm going to be out of town. Hey, that's awesome. Where are you going? This makes a lot of sense. Um, when do you get back? I get back this time. Okay. Schedule when you get back. <laughs> if they say they can't, they, you know, um, so you just got to say, so our process looks a whole lot like, you know, for us to really not to review, to reduce the amount of estimates we have to do and time we have to take and for it to be a better experience for you. And it's to, to be to come up with the best solution for you. It's not about us. It's not about us getting both people in the room. Okay, it's about helping them with their roofing decision. Mm -hmm. See, that's that's what we need to focus on, like on this, yeah. because it is. We're like, yeah, we're not going to get this deal if we email this. Yeah, so I'm going to make sure they're both there for me. No, it's about them, right? So I need to make sure that we can help you with your roofing solution. And the best way to do that is when you get back, we can spend some time together. Is that going to be okay? There cool. you go. Boom. That's fire, brother. That's He's going to say no to that. I know. I got, I got a question. You got to build the value and, and understand. And yeah. Let me, inter this is a great topic, man. Because salespeople are, they're, they're just herded like cattle and thrown out there and, and expected to, to figure out how to sell roofs. Man, as a homeowner, I'm not going to make, as an educated adult, responsible individual homeowner, I am not going to make a $20,000 decision to a guy that's giving me a 15 minute elevator pitch. So why do we keep doing that? Mm -hmm. And and then we get frustrated when our clientele are really frustrating to deal with because we keep doing it. And it's a numbers game. If you do that same 15 minute pitch over and over and over and over, you're going to get somebody to, 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 to sign and, and do the contract. But the thing is, what is your clientele when you're doing that? When you're just giving away deductibles and yeah. doing the cheapest bid, you're setting yourself up to be a roofing company to get ran over. Those are the same clients that are going to all of a sudden have new tires because of the nails you left in the driveway. All of a sudden, there are cracks in the driveway or your fault 
yep. all of a sudden their old paint that's rusted and and messed up something windows or whatever is now your fault and, and these these are the clients that are looking to, out to get something right yep so if you set yourself up that way you're going to have to deal with the headaches that come from that absolutely i like you guys you guys hey you guys are spinning some fire but i'm gonna put a little bit we got some people out there that are hitting us up i just want to make sure we're touching on what people are saying and what you're asking about first off you know bernie asked about sandler i think he's talking about the sandler sales training uh actually it's sales transformation group ryan groth check it out man <laughs> check him out man we'll put the link on here too so you guys can learn a little bit more about him and whatnot uh but julio actually had a question i want to make sure we hit on this because he's a good buddy of mine uh he actually just joined the roofing academy too man Welcome, brother. what up julio we'll be seeing him in austin texas yeah. too because i know he's out in waco uh, but he he's talking about um it says it seems to me that when you're trying a virtual sale, the body movements can be extra. I would feel tone, language, articulation would pay, uh, play dominance in the virtual world. Is that fair to say? You you have to ex accentuate. Is that the right word? Accentuate what mm -hmm. you can. So if you know that your tonality, you're not going to be able to be effective with physical tonality. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, don't be slouching. Hey, I'm on the Zoom call right now. <laughs> Uh, here's, this is what we do. We're this rating. We're, you know, we're gaff. We're own course. No, man, be into it, get into it and center yourself, engage with them as much yep. as you possibly can, because you have to kind of make up for what you can't do because you're not in a physical room with them. Correct. Right. That's how mm -hmm. I would interpret that. Yeah. And, and, right. and remember, yeah. and remember, you know, you can accentuate all you want. You can jump and do jack, clap jacks and, and, and spin a hula hoop all you want. But if you're not asking questions and you're not engaging them, they're not going to feel yeah. like you really care. You're going to sound like anybody else. So it's yeah. all about how much they perceive you care, which you do when you ask great questions. And um, it's, it's, and I would say this, this is, you know, this is huge. It's mm -hmm. knowing the sales process is a lot less about what questions to ask than what information to get. Okay. Um, yeah. You can ask, you can get information and ask it in a lot of different ways. Yeah. The biggest problem when, when I see with my clients who think they get all caught up in the questions. Okay. The questions are awesome. Okay. But, and you need to learn that, but your skill of asking questions, isn't it? It's getting information and you can ask that a million different ways. And now all of a sudden you're robotic. And what happens when you have, you know, someone trying to learn a new technique in the game, they're not practicing it. They're not understanding what the really, the real why behind the, the, the whole process. They're, they're not letting their natural athlete take over. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many of you are in sports, but if you're an athlete, if you're an athlete, you're a natural athlete, you, you know, you, it's the fundamentals that you practice outside of the game that take over in the game. And I mean, I was just watching this Kobe Bryant interview. I think I tagged both of you guys. And he said that, that when he value. did not, oh my gosh, it's so it was good. A good one. So good, dude. Yeah, oh good. my gosh. It, yeah. It's so good. But he's just I'm so a guy and I thought it was good, dude. Man, you know? we got to meet Tim Grover just yeah. and get to go to like a private session with him. And that was dude. cool. Well, dude, because nice. he trained Kobe, cool. MJ, trained, yeah. Wade. Oh, yeah. wow. So, so cool, dude. Yeah. But I'll be real quick on this point. Um, you know, but the reality is he, he, when he was 10 or 11 years old, he played one summer. He didn't score any baskets. His dads came to him afterwards. He was super, cr he was crying. He was sad. And, he, and his dad said to him, Hey, if you score 60 or zero, I love you the same. And so that gave him a ton of confidence to fail, make mistakes. And what he did was he realized that I'm just going to work on all his fundamentals. So his fundamental game got real strong. He outworked everybody on the fundamentals. Two years later, when he grew into his body, he gave the best player in the state in two years. So mm -hmm. the reality is wow. we have to allow, we have to work on fundamentals outside. And a lot of salespeople get caught up on, Oh, I got to ask this question. Okay. It's like saying, I got to post up exactly like this. Well, why are you trying to post up? Well, you're posting up to get the guy out of the way so you can create some space. It's about that, not about the technique specifically, but once you work on the technique outside of the game in practice, your natural athlete takes over. And I think the biggest mistake is owners and sales leaders don't spend enough time coaching and spend enough time training and role playing and simulating what it looks like so that you can let your natural athlete take over in the game. Um, and they try to sit there and say, Hey, here's how you do it. Go do it in the game. <laughs> and you're waiting and you're, and you're trying to practice on your customers instead of practicing and in, um, outside that. So, yeah. And that's, that just reiterates what I said earlier about just having a step-by-step -step process. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if, even if you're a small company starting out and you can't afford 
you know, to hire someone like myself or Ryan to come in and, and work and build with your build your sales team. Just illustrate what you know about sales and just step one, do this. Step two, do this. Step three, do this. Step four, do, do this. And then add in a little bit. Hey, just be real. Ask great questions mm -hmm. and genuinely care about your clients. Yeah. And you will automatically have so, more success in sales. And then you'll have the money yeah. to hire a coach and someone to come in and really help you help your team. Right. That's what it's all about. Right. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's not about, you know, a lot of these sales coaches come in, they want to just pump your team up. But, you know, Ryan and I both see eye to eye on this and we want to help the leadership be coaching yeah. and help train the, yeah. the leaders of their organizations to become coaches. Yeah. Because as a leader, when you can be a coach, people mm. will follow so, and people will buy into okay. what you're trying to do. And that will cut turnover down. So okay, majorly, let's, let's transition to this. Cause I know my, our dude Julio is out there and I actually want to touch on that. Cause I know he's a leader, right? So he's yeah. actually the owner, um, out in Waco. He's got his own Jack roofing, you know, what can he do to make sure his team is kicking butt out there in the field? I mean, that's a really, that's a, can I, should we tighten it up a little bit? Yeah, yeah go brother. for it, man. Yeah, that's a pretty huge question. I mean, there's a lot of intricacies. <laughs> there's, but, a, there's a lot. Right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't, whew, what's that? Ooh, baby, let's um, go, man. I don't, I don't know where he's bit, at. Man. I don't know yeah. where he's at. I don't know um, his context of, you know, I think I need to learn a lot more. But yeah, first, no, he, first he's I would got say, a really good, good thing going, good brand. Yeah. Uh, they, they, clean they're, brand. They're, yeah. yeah, good, clean, clean brand, really professional. He's got a great network and he's done a great job himself, but he's yeah. trying to expand his company and, and, and keep that, protect that brand that he's worked so hard to build. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the focus, you know, who you know, I've gotten to connect a little nice. bit cool. and it's, and it's, it's about leading his team to, to carry on the torch, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would first off start to start with a plan and know what success begins to look like from a factual objective standpoint, um, start to know what that looks like and then start to build a framework within that. Obviously, getting a defined sales process in place and getting a structure in place and making sure that your compensation is in alignment to create the behavior you want. So is it more service revenue you want? Is it more re-roof revenue you want? Is it more is it more commercial? Is it, you know, does a new construction in a particular niche a part of your you want to compensate accordingly so that the behavior is coming out. Because compensation drives behavior. I mean bar none, it just does. And um you know, so then, and what you're going to want to do is now that you have compensation tied to the goals, you want to make sure that those salespeople are bought into those goals. You want to make sure that those salespeople, you know, why those goals matter to them. Okay, like it's one thing to say, "Hey, do this," and then you'll make this much money. It's a whole nother thing to have a conversation about, "Hey, why does this much money mean so much to you?" Okay, why yeah. is that important? Okay, I want to help you be successful. So I don't just care about you making, let's say, a hundred grand. Why is a hundred grand important? Tell me more. All right. So how many deals do you think you need to close to get there? And then how many proposals and how many meetings and how many you know doors you got to knock? Let's reverse engineer this. And I'm going to go ahead and hold you accountable to these things because I want to see you be successful. Now I'm not beating him with a stick. Now I'm saying, dude, I'm a coach. You want to you want to win and you want to get married and you want to have a family or you want to get out of debt or you want to whatever it is. Um, I'm now helping you become that person versus you do it for me because you work for me. That's hugely different. Now you can create all kinds of different things in the midst of that. You know, I know Randy's big on intrinsic culture. I totally I do certain things with all my clients and I try to make it something that's a collaboration. But you start to fold in these things and it's not just about the money. It's about other things that are created. I think if people know that they belong first and they believe the way they, you know, your belief systems and the right belief systems, then, and they, then they're going to behave right. Um, I don't think you can just come in and change behavior like that. They got to know they belong. They got to know they're a part of something bigger than themselves. And, um, and then you have to have ongoing training. I mean, like ask yourself, I mean, the Tom Brady, Tom versus time thing, like the content you just see on Facebook is amazing. Like that, that guy is not just showing up to practice. I mean, he is watching game film. He is on unbelievable. Is practice. Practice. And like, think about him. I mean, like he was a backup in Michigan, right? Like he, you see, wow. like go watch his combine stuff, man. And like watching him at the combine, he does not look impressive. And then his whole draft board. Oh man, they ripped him up, dude. 
But what did he do? I worked everybody, man. Yeah, and he and he just leverages the strength. And so, like, the idea is that you have to have that why yourself. Is it Julio? So, Mm -hmm. what do you want, Julio? Why do you want it? Why do you even want to do like X million? Yeah, you know, I love it. I don't care if it's a boat. I don't care if it's a boat. It's a boat. Why do you want a boat? Because you want to be cool. Sounds good. As long as you define it. Have the boat. I think you might have the boat already. Yeah. (laughs) Well, whatever that is, it's just the why needs to be defined. There's nothing wrong with it, you know. But then dig and then say, okay, my why is going to be different than these guys' why. I got to find that out. And then obviously there's training and culture and systems and processes and leads that got to come in and prospecting and hunting and referral generating and account reviews and developing existing accounts and but it's got to be a constant um it's like saying you know hey be a head coach but you're going to play quarterback and you're going to play safety it's like and you're going to be the offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator so your owner sales manager production manager and you sell and you get on job sometime to manage projects okay and and upraised about 90 percent of roofers their hands right. just all went up all yeah. of your hands went up yeah so That's if you me. don't have a vision, if you don't have a know, a know where you want to be, there's no way you can bring anybody into that and pay them to do what you want them to do accordingly and uh, have some measure of success. It got, you got to go deep. And so um, obviously that's a big part of it, but um, you know, and, you know, but from, but sales is what obviously makes all that work. Um, yeah. And you got to go. Purpose. Yeah. It's, it's all about purpose. And you know, the short little cap to that is, People just, nat- it's human nature. We all want to be a part of something. You know, we're not, we, we're, we're not bred to, to be by ourselves. We're bred to connect with one another. That's human nature. Mm-hmm. We want to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. Right. <clears throat> so us as leaders and entrepreneurs of our companies, we have to create something, create something that other people want to be a part of. Yep. You know, you're not just selling the idea of making a bunch of money to to go party and do whatever you want with a bunch of money. You're selling purpose. And if you truly believe that first and understand what that purpose is and portray that to your sales team and and, and make that an extension of you and your brand, Mm -hmm. man, it's amazing what happens when that, when when you can put those things together. So, okay. Absolutely. I want to dive into another question. looks like we got um, Janice is asking this one to Ryan. It says, so Ryan, so what type of compensation motivates Uh, base plus compensation or a hundred percent commission. We find that hundred percent attracts seasonal personnel. Yeah. So, um, you know, those who are, if you know that people are extrinsically motivated, like money motivated and their sales cycles are shorter commissions better. Um, but is a hundred percent commission, the ticket, is it a draw? Is it a a base plus commission? Um, you got to think about, you know, the more you give in salary, um, the less, you know, the more they're going to, they're going to be able to sustain longer sales cycles. They got to be able to just survive. Um, and then, you know, yeah, you're going to experience a lot more turnover with an extrinsic, uh, with a commission base, especially hundred percent, because, um, somebody has to not only be motivated, but they actually have the goods, um, to be able to do it. And when they're thrown in the, in the deep end like that, I'm not a huge, not that I, there's nothing wrong with this, but I don't believe in a hundred percent commission, unless you have a machine and a culture already kind of pumping. Um, but again, I'm not, a, I'm not like a, a storm guy motivated. So there's not as much capital to kind of invest into a storm. We got to pay a bunch of salaries. I mean, there's different methods, but if I you're think- looking, if you're looking for a sustainable year round business model with a team that stays, I mean, you want to, um, you want to think about your selling cycles and how they're motivated. And, you can pay somebody who's intrinsically motivated. They don't really care about the money, but they can be an awesome salesperson if you do the right reward systems in place and uh, pay them a decent salary with some kind of a quarterly or biannual bonus uh, based on their performance. So, I, I think the key is if you're if you're going to to have an employee based model, you got to have a structure and a culture built around that. You know about and you've got to establish those boundaries and establish those expectations of activities that are required yeah. you know it's not about all about just mm-hmm. the numbers you get it's about the activities that you put forth to to achieve these goals and whatnot and, and you gotta as an employee model you really gotta do a great job up front of of interviewing and hiring and hiring the right type of person that can facilitate that type of environment and the same goes for a subcontract model you know, the way I look at it, yeah, we, we've kind of I've played with a couple of different things over the time and I've, I've worked with all different types of 
uh, clients and contractors that do both. And mm -hmm. I've seen both be very successful. And from, from the other perspective of, of a subcontractor, you know, type of environment, mm -hmm. you got to don't treat them like employees, treat them like business partners. You, know, you got to establish those partnership expectations up front. If you want to come work with me and you want to be a, a full 10 million, I will pay you at the, at the highest rate, but these are my expectations. You execute on your side. I execute on my side and it's a great relationship. We hold each other accountable, but you got to own part of that. You're, you know, both of you have to own part of that. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that's, that, that has worked for us. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. I mean, a lot of my guys may be watching. What's up? Love you guys. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't, we have a sales meeting. It's not a sales meeting of me barking and telling everybody else what to do. It's a sales meeting where all my business partners are together and we're talking business. How do we build, develop and grow our businesses and become better at business? That's mm -hmm. the mentality. And then next thing you know, these guys are like, okay, winter time comes great. They're, they're, they're honing in and getting better and wanting to get better, but you got to create that culture. You know, if you have a culture of guys just showing up when storms happening and leaving, Great, build a culture around that, but understand that that has that that has its ebbs and flows. It's gonna, it's like it expands and contracts like quickly. But you know, if you if you do it right, have that culture around. Hey, in the winter time, we're gonna focus on training and getting better and learning how to sell retail and learning how to sell commercial, learning how to sell, sell coatings and other things, or or even completely sell other things like insulation or that sort of thing. You can get these people to mm -hmm. work year round and where they're not just traveling all the time. You know. Yep. That's yep. huge. I mean, how, and if you're a family guy and you want to have, you know, build companies and, you know, they want to have kids and family and, you know, traveling doesn't really support the family life. It's just be honest. It makes it very, very challenging. Marriage is hard enough as it is, uh, you know, to grow and, you know, to develop a great marriage and have kids and all this stuff. And so um, not to say that it's wrong, but you just got to build for that. Like there's going to be a lot of turnover with that. So you're not spending as much money on sales, um, you know, employee based kind of year round training and or employee salaries, but you're going to spend more money on recruiting and, and the turnover that you the, the revenue that you lose because of turnover um, and the people inability to commit long term. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, there's nothing right or wrong necessarily. You just got to know what you're getting into, I think. And uh, so, yeah. Well, you know, hey, so what I want to kind of do is as we wrap this up, because we're coming up about an hour, um, we do really appreciate the engagement today, guys. That was awesome, especially when we got a guy like, you know, Ryan on here. Yeah, yeah, as well pick his brain. Stuff. This is um, awesome. We have a couple of things. I, I know Ryan has something to kind of offer to you guys as well, um, but I, I do want to give away the ticket. So I was, okay. I was looking through the shares. Okay. And one of our dudes, who's a very, very common supporter. Uh oh, here we go. Is shared it out with like a million groups, man. So our guy, Joe. <laughs> Right, you know Joe, Joe? yeah, Joe, Joe, Joe man. Lesher. We're gonna give it to Joe Lesher, all Joe right? So, Lesher with Lesher roofing. You yeah, know what, man? Yeah, That's well deserved, awesome. man. Like he's, I'm excited. He's, That's yeah. really cool, man. He's, Joe is just getting his start company started. Yeah, we've been going back and forth, man. He's putting a lot of thought and effort in really doing this and and putting his plan together methodically before he just dives right in the deep end. He's a really sharp guy, man. From in the military, the whole deal, Joe. Awesome. Congratulations, yeah. man. We'll, we'll connect with you, man. This we'll make sure we, we actually have a code. So what you'll be able to do is we have a code. Usually the ticket's $300. Uh, we have a code that you'll be able to um, uh, just punch in on the website. So we'll, we'll connect. We'll make sure that we, we get that taken care of for you, man. Perfect, man. Yeah, Congratulations, and, Joe. Man, hey, thanks for all the support too, man, Joe. Dude, you're always asking bomb questions and sharing it out, dude. You are the man. Appreciate it, man. So Ryan, I think, has yeah. a little deal too as Ryan's well, right? we got, got more yeah. Ooh, Hey, if yeah. you thought you were going to tune out, Ooh, you tuned wait. out. For those of you who tuned out, you tuned out too too soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ryan's got, got something for you as well. So um, I am actually hosting a uh, an October 18th and 19th, a two-day sales accelerator boot camp in which Randy's got a couple of his guys coming down. Oh, yeah. And it is in South Beach, Miami, Florida. Ooh. Uh, and uh, so I'll be hosting it. It's going to be a nice, intimate group. Um, and what I like to do is give, um, my ticket away for not give it away. I'm going to give a 50% discount rate. Um, it will be an investment and, uh, on your part to come down, spend a couple of days at a hotel, um, your time and some money. Um, but I'll give you a uh, 50% off of what I'm charging, um, everybody else. And, um, but here's what I need. I need you. If you want this, 
you have to write to me, Nick, and Randy why you want to come. So whoever has the oh, whoever yeah. has the best why, Woo. whoever has the best why is able to come. All right. So, okay. so um, it's time. So it's a, it's this fifty uh, percent off sales accelerator. Is that what you called it? Sales accelerator boot camp. Mm -hmm. um, you're gonna get an analysis included that's gonna help you see how exactly how you sell um, and how effective you are. We're gonna use that as a part of our training, and you're gonna you know need to invest and so uh, some money on the travel and the time, of course, and then um, I'll, I'll let you know on the messenger uh, how much that's gonna be. So, but I need to forget the forget the money. Okay, you want to come to do why? Why do you want to come get trained? If you liked what I had to say, um, you think I can help you and you want to be in relationship um, and start a relationship, um, write and send Nick, Randy, and I in a group message why so you would want to come to South Beach for that. Let me cap this thing. If, if you are a contractor out there that is looking to facilitate sales year in and year out in growth and be able to, to go after those large jobs that can help launch your company to a whole new dimension this is an opportunity that you've got to take advantage of completely agree 100 percent. completely agree and i mean you it's crazy because ryan and i'm not even just like saying this to say this i mean i remember me and you had a talk for maybe like 15 minutes about um just sales and remember i have a marketing company right and the exact same thing was effective with me it made me think deeper and it's just not it's it's so much higher level what ryan's talk about than a lot of the stuff you hear out there it's more emotional it's more of why the heck is this important to you what does that sale mean to you if you get this sale what is what does that mean for your life, right? It goes way deeper. And like, that's the kind of stuff that can really grow um, you as a salesperson and, and make a big impact in your business. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So as we wrap this thing up, yeah. you know, let's get the, uh, let's get the fun stuff out of the way. Uh, Ryan Groth with yeah. Sales Transformation Group. Where can yep. we find you, man? Uh, I know you, yeah. you're on Facebook now, but where, where's the best place to, to, to check in and follow uh, what Ryan is up to. Yeah, LinkedIn's my my best channel. I'm usually doing a couple of posts a week. Um, and uh, whether I'm with a client or I make a comment, um, you know, or at a, at some kind of a show, um, you know, you can reach me on that. Grab a set up a messenger. You know, shoot me a message yep. and we can jump on a call. My website is just essentially just a brochure, just saying hi and introducing. Um, you know, who I am and, and what I'm doing. But uh, yeah, LinkedIn, just if you're big on LinkedIn, uh, do that. If you have no LinkedIn, just connect to me on Facebook. Yep. Um, love to, Instagram. You know, love to. Instagram. I, actually, I do uh, share more on Instagram than I do on Facebook. So Ryan underscore Groth. And uh, that's, that's definitely, you're going to see a lot of family, a little bit of business stuff, um, some sales stuff and uh, some fitness stuff. So trying to get trying to get shredded right now. He's doing some pull ups, man. Oh I saw God. him, man. I, dude, he was he was cranking over twenty pull ups over here, man. You know, so I was like, all right, I see you, Ryan. He's trying to get that baseball shape. I think he's trying yeah, to make buddy. a comeback, dude. But yeah. I guys, I also I put um, uh, Ryan's LinkedIn page um, uh, in the comments here. I know, in all honesty, like I, that's one of the best spots to connect with him. He's he's pretty active on there. Uh, so if you guys use LinkedIn, make sure you you, you connect with him there. All right, so I'll wrap this up. Get get uh, get my little my little spiel yeah. over with here. Uh, as always, you can find me and Nick uh, at Nick at Nick Perret and myself at the Roofpreneur on Instagram, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, YouTube. We're on all, mm -hmm. uh, on all the channels. Make sure you're following us there. But more importantly, if you like this show, if you like this, what's going on with the Start Build Grow Show and some of these episodes, we yeah. appreciate the the comments, the shares. Let us know how we're doing. Yeah. You know, give us some insight. I mean, if we can do something to get better, we are all dedicated to making this the best, most, most uh, interactive and educational, inspiring content out there. So do it. Do us a favor and like our show. Yeah. Go to the show, the show page, the start, build, grow show. There's a link right there in the right there in the top. Click on that. Make sure to like it and share that out with your friends. You know, we want to try to build this this show page up as much as we can because yeah. we're getting a ton of great feedback and we just want to keep keep sharing this and keep this thing moving with, uh, with you know, keep the movement going. Right? Yeah, man. <laughs> and, and as always, you know, don't forget, there's a lot of roofers, a lot of contractors that watch. And, and, and if you followed us and you like, you know, we like, obviously Groth brings the heat. He brings the heat, baby. And, and hopefully I said something oh, that was valuable as well. Oh, Randy, you always bring uh, the heat, if, man. If so, it's about definitely the hit us up at the roofingacademy.com. You know, I'm dedicated to teaching entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. 
at its core, right. entrepreneurship, business strategies, processes, yep. and a really sweet sales program yep. that produces million dollar sales guys yep. over and over and over. We dominate the residential market. Ryan Groth, my dude, dominates yeah. the, the the commercial market. We've been working together for a couple of years now. And, you know, bias aside to, you know, we can no, really, no, really let me help. say this. Let me say this. Let me let me sell it for you guys. Cause in all honesty, I'm I'm 26 years old. I'm learning a ton about business and I'm messing up every single day, right? And we talk about the importance of mentorship, right? And when you're looking at these two guys here, they've made a big impact on me. So I appreciate both of you guys, Ryan, Randy, you guys really do appreciate what you guys do. And it's all about their values and they do care about the results that they're driving for you guys. And I mean for me owning a marketing company, this stuff that they have, the goods that they have, is affecting me in terms of growing my company. So think about what it can do for you. And that's no BS. That's just me being lucky to meet these guys. So legitimately make sure you're checking them out. Yep. Check us out online yeah, and, nice. uh, the roofing mm -hmm. I think, I think that was a good spot right there. I mean, I'm, I'm a little tired, man. That was good. After that, <laughs> we brought the heat for an hour right there. And, uh, and I'm, 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 I'm wrapped up. I'm ready yeah, to go, man. man. <laughs> and last but not least, if you're, if you're not ready to kind of go all in and pull the trigger on yeah. the roofing academy or, or go that route, Hey, check the book out. Yeah. We've had a lot of amazing feedback and we're impacting contractors, not just roofers all over the country, all over the world. Mm -hmm. This thing actually went bestseller in four different countries. That's man. what's up, man. So grab it, grab it on Amazon uh, and you can download it or, or, or get the print version, or you can hit me up directly and, and uh, you can, you can buy one directly from me and I'll send you a signed copy. Heck yeah. Well, hey guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in of episode 28 of the Star Bill Grow Show. We had Ryan Groth bringing the fire, man, former Los <laughs> Angeles uh, angel and now the sales guru. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Have a great night. Take care and God bless. See you guys.